Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. The 25th Sunday after Trinity, we make a little uh, time jump in the church year for the third to the last Sunday of the church year. So we have Trinity 25, 26, and then 27 is the last Sunday of the church year. So, uh, and those three Sundays have a theme uh, particular to the end of the church year and the end of time. Uh, so we begin with our opening, uh, we begin with our service, Divine Service Setting 3, on page 184, and our bells will introduce our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your dreadful and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Res rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from my persecutors. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give glory Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on 
upon us. For thou, holy art holy, thou holy art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Son, in the glory of God, Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we implore you, show your mercy to your humble servants, that we, who put no trust in our own merits, may not be dealt with after the severity of your judgment, but according to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament for the third to the last Sunday of the church year is written in the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, the 32nd chapter. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses... The man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in, your ears, in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people, whom you brought up, up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great name, a nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your anger, your wrath, burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and, as, and all this land I have promised I will give to your offspring and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. Then Moses turn, turned and went down from the mountain 
with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and on the back they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. But Moses said, it is not the sound of shouting for victory or the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and dance, the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot and he threw the tablet out of his hands, and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made, and burned it with fire, and ground it to powder, and scattered it on the water, and made the people of Israel drink it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your foes have roared in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their own signs for signs. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica, the fourth chapter. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will de descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the, trumpet, or with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, When you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas for women who are pregnant and those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no and never will be, and if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand, so if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wait. On this third to the last Sunday of the church year, the unavoidable theme to all the propers is wait. Wait for Moses to come down from Mount Sinai. Wait for your turn to die in Christ. Wait for Jesus to return on the last day. Wait. But as you see in all the readings, the reason for the exhortation to wait is that no one seems to be listening. Israel and Aaron fashion a golden calf. The Thessalonians are falling into despair that they are still alive, which gives them time to think that maybe there is no hope for them or their dead loved ones. And so they need to be reminded. And then there's Jesus. Jesus, knowing the restless hearts of men, even has to prepare his hearers to perceive the coming events after his ascension in the right light. Specifically, Jesus speaks of the abomination of desolation that Daniel prophesies way back when Israel was held captive in Babylon. It was bad back then, but Daniel is inspired to tell of a worse time yet to come. The destruction of the temple by the Romans in 70 AD, and then also the subsequent fallout in the times to follow. He was bad for a singular moment, but in the prophecy, it can extend much farther. In fact, it does, to the end of days. At the time of the temple's destruction, Rome went all scorched earth. No stone was left on top of another. The altar of sacrifice was destroyed which for those who denied Jesus' sacrifice as sufficient, well, that is, or that is, that it was once and for all, well, they were apoplectic. You see, access to God was severed when the temple was destroyed. And then to add insult to injury, they had to get out of Dodge, out of the holy city, or die. It was bad. But worse was to come, and worse will come. In the midst of this despair, the once thought of as vibrant and eternally established people of God are as good as dead, corpses about which the vultures circle. Since so many missed, or rather refused to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah, the temple's destruction and access to God severed was a lucrative opportunity for the minions of Satan, the false prophets, to pawn off false Christ or false messiahs to the masses. You see, if things were that bad, that there was no temple, well then, then obviously the Messiah must be around somewhere. And it might as well be this guy or that guy, at least the one that I suggest, and so they lead people astray. Oh, and for the trouble of finding him and pointing him out, how about a couple of bucks? Or your gold earrings? Dear saints, the temple ain't getting built again, and we need to give up that idea. That door is shut forever. This day, on the temple mound, where the temple used to be, God has put his seal. A Muslim mosque now is erected there. The temple is not going to be rebuilt, nor does it need to be. Yet without fail, because the devil is restless, as in death thralls, there are still active false prophets who lead astray, if possible, the elect, who claim that the temple must be rebuilt, for Jesus to come back. This is to fashion a false Christ, a false idol, and it is to blatantly ignore Jesus' clear words. Wait. 
impatience, failing to wait, always without exception leads to idolatry. We see it at Sinai, and we see it in Thessalonica. Instead of trusting the Word of God and waiting for His providence and deliverance, we doubt and pursue our own way, our own gods. We get restless. When time marches on and things go from tolerable to torturous in a moment, when days of loneliness turn into years, when everyone around us is gone and yet we linger into old age, the devil, the world, and our own fallen minds look for relief in all the wrong places. We turn to things, the things of this creation, and we turn them into golden idols. These are our gods who will get us through to the end. We tell ourselves this, at least. The money, the toys, the late-night Amazon impulse buys trying to fill the void and distract us and trying to distract ourselves from the emptiness inside. The liquor, the pills, the food that attempt to numb the pain. The glow of our computer screens with all their illicit images of those things and people that are not given to us by God as we try to fabricate intimacy with something that really isn't real. All of these things are false. They are idols. They will never deliver what what we think they will. They, They only lead to death, eternal death. They are not gods. They are nothing. The only thing, the only comfort we are afforded is God's holy word. And that word is sufficient. It is the source of all things, and it also is the sustainer of all things, including us as we wait. Recorded in Holy Scripture is account after account of God's Word going forth and accomplishing the purposes for which it was sent. It creates faith in the One who speaks. Over and over again, the Word and promises of God come to fruition even in spite of His beloved people not believing it. It is by His grace and His mercy that He is faithful in all that He says. Believe it. What we hear in the Scriptures is a real history of God's powerful Word doing what we all need to endure, or doing doing what we all need in order to endure to the end. We hear of all the failures of men, the same failures that we ourselves commit. We hear of their rebuke from God and are so rebuked ourselves. We are condemned of our sins, for there is no sin that is not common to man. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, of the one true God. Yet more than hearing of our condemnation. We hear of God's deliverance. Even in the face of gross idolatry, like making a golden calf in our Old Testament reading, God doesn't start over with Moses. He wants to at first. But after being reminded of the promises He made, promises that Moses knew full well, He is bound to repent. Yes, he is angry, to be sure, but he relents from his justified wrath. He is reminded of who he truly is, not that he needed it, but that Moses might confess, as we are all to confess, that Moses might grab hold of the words and promises of God, as we all are to do. He is merciful, which for us is great, great comfort in our own idolatry as we repent and live in His mercy toward us. 
What we truly deserve is actually doled out upon us. What we truly deserve is not actually doled out upon us. No matter how bad it may seem, it could be worse. In fact, it should be worse. The wages of sin is death. Yet like Adam and Eve who received the opportunity to live, we are afforded the same. We are not struck down right where we are. No, our first parents were spared by God because of blood. Blood shed by the animal whose skins would then cover their naked shame. God was indeed gracious and merciful to them. And for us, we have life because of the one whom that animal pointed to. The one who speaks our gospel lesson today. For Jesus was sacrificed in our place. His blood shed for us that we might live. What we should get is born by Him, by Jesus the Messiah, the Savior. He is perfect love enter, who enters our time and waits with us. Yes, He waits. He waits with us and for us. For 33 years He waited. He waited, knowing full well for what He was waiting. The proper time. He willingly waited to die for us all. He had to wait to be born. He had to wait to be a child. He had to wait to, be, to grow up. He had to wait for time to pass. The eternal God, who created time itself, is born in the flesh to wait. And he did his waiting, not for himself, but for us. For us who hate to wait. Jesus came to earth and died in time to redeem us in time. He is faithful to the end and his blood is shed for us that we might live and wait in him. Wait is one's constantly being forgiven. For us who believe, who are baptized in His name, we are intimately connected to Him, to Jesus who waits with us, who strengthens us to persevere, to endure. You see, because we are clothed in Jesus and His righteousness, we need not go looking out there for God. We need not make an idol of anything in order to be closer to God or even to cope during the wait. The temple is not necessary for us anymore. He is not there. For we have Jesus with us, even to the end of the age. We are baptized. We hear the word, which is Him. And we feast on His very body and blood in His Holy Supper. You see, through these means, Jesus lives in us as He daily puts Himself there, in our hearts, through our ears, and in our mouths. And because He has done that, when the final day comes, and it will come, we need not be worried. We need not worry about anything. For worry is itself idolatry. What we are given to be about is hearing. Hearing the Word of God and receiving Jesus in the sacraments without hindrance, without restriction. We are for all, they are for all of us, for all of us who believe. They are for all of us who believe that Jesus has already come and it was enough. That He has made full atonement. That is, He has made us one with God. His sacrifice was enough and the Father has accepted it. Our debt is paid in full. Jesus rose again. That is the proof we need that Jesus, when He says it is finished, 
The father accepts it, and then three days later, he rises again, because when death is then destroyed, when the debt is paid, life is all there is to be had. So the temple is no longer needed, and our access to God is not severed. But in truth, it is greater now, for Jesus is closer than he has ever been. In Jesus, God has become man. And now in Jesus, man is in God. Believe it. For when Jesus returns on the last day as a flash of lightning, which all will see and hear, we will not fear. We will not fear, but what we will rejoice that our waiting will finally and forever be over. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we keep in our prayers uh, Amy Field, who is uh, David Racer's niece, who is recently diagnosed and is being treated for a blood disorder. And we continue to pray for my grandmother, Marilyn Strader, who is on hospice in Florida. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are entirely given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors, 
and to those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound in your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, strengthen newly established congregations and support them in challenging times. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the schools of the church and all colleges, universities, and centers of research and those who teach and work in them. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous and be with all all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Amy Field and Marilyn Schrader, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near, and bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, body of Christ,
behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen.
Christ shed for you, the blood of 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 Christ Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. Be marked in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Light to light in the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. O oh, God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
seated. Lord's blessings to you again this the third to last Sunday of the church year, Trinity 25. A couple of announcements to bring to your attention. Thank you for all who came to the uh, hog roast last week. Uh, we uh, had a decent turnout and uh, uh, appreciate the work that the Concordia students did in, in putting that presentation together. So uh, be on the lookout for next year's uh, hog roast and already be thinking about being the kitchen cleavy this year, next year. All right, you've got 12 months to think about it. 12 months to think about being the kitchen cleavy. So, um, so we want to be ready for that next year. Um, poinsettias, it's hard to believe that we're already talking about poinsettias. So if you would like to order one um, that is available in the uh, narthex underneath the coat rack, right? I saw a box out there. Judy did, or Ruth, did I see that? Yes? yes. So uh, fill out the paperwork and uh, we'll get those for our Christmas celebration. Uh, immediately following the service this morning, uh, there will be, or are we having, or did you put out goodies, Tim? No? Yeah, there's some out there. Okay, I'm just kidding. So, it, Five minutes, ten minutes, what do you want to give them? Ten. ten minutes. All right, ten minutes to go potty, do all the things that you need to do, uh, get your coffee, right, all right, and then come back for our meeting here in the, in the sanctuary uh, for... The, the little kids do have Sunday school. Okay. Yes, they will have, meet with Sunday school. And no opening, so uh, just go right into your lesson for the Sunday school. Um, also... Uh, their cookie walk is also coming up soon, so we are two scheduled events. Uh, Tuesday the 14th, you'll have cookie decorating. Um, that is from 6 to 8. And then the 18th, that's a Saturday from 9 to noon, will be uh, candy pretzels. So uh, if you are interested in participating in that, please put that on your calendar. Also, there is a sign-up sheet for the adult choir. Uh, um, Crystal um, Hoffensberger has offered to uh, lead a choir uh, here uh, at St. John's. And so uh, to find out what the interest is, uh, there is a sign-up sheet on the table uh, where the bulletins usually are in the narthex. So if you are interested, we will be meeting uh, whenever, when we figure out the, the starting date. We will be meeting after Bible study on Sunday mornings. Okay, so uh, we'll go from divine service to Bible study in Sunday school. And then right after that, we will come back here for, for choir rehearsal. Uh, so I hope uh, you might be interested in doing that. If half the congregation's in the choir, that'd be great. Um, uh, that, and we, uh, we would look forward to that. So, so that is in the, in the narthex. Are there any other announcements at this time? None? All right, seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless. <laughs>